Of the nine species of wild goat, just one has a population under 1,000, and is the only species found exclusively on the African continent. The Walia ibex is the rarest wild goat, with a population numbering under 600 mature individuals, but is thankfully on the rise. It is the only species in the Capra genus limited to a single country, found only in a small mountainous region of northern Ethiopia. The Walia ibex spends 40.5% of its day feeding, according to a study published in 2020. The researchers used a method known as scan sampling, which amounts to watching and recording the activity of ibex at regular intervals. In total, over 18,000 activities were recorded during the day over a two-year period, 52% in the wet season and 48% in the dry season. In addition to feeding, the most common activities were resting, moving and standing, with vigilance, socialising and rutting making up smaller percentages. As the researchers expected, Ibex spent more time feeding during the early morning and afternoon, while resting increased during midday, and they found that other activities showed less fluctuation. In terms of rutting activity, this increased substantially late in the morning during the dry season, and remained consistently low during the wet season. Males spent less time feeding than females, and spent more time resting, along with more time engaged in rutting activity. Across multiple sources, the Walia ibex is one of the larger wild goat species, with most citing a maximum weight of around 280 pounds. On the other end of the scale, the Nubian ibex is the smallest species of wild goat, weighing no more than 140 pounds. This species is also the third rarest, with a mature population of 4,500, and, like the Walia ibex, is listed as vulnerable. One of the most distinctive features of this species is its bright white and black socks, which are present in some of the other Capra species, although not to such a vibrant degree in my opinion. The range of the Nubian ibex is much larger than that of the Walia, being listed as extant in eight countries, and presence uncertain in two and is the only wild goat found exclusively in desert and shrubland habitats. During COVID-19, researchers conducted a fascinating study in the Israeli Negev Desert, monitoring Nubian ibex movement in order to measure the impact of tourism on the behaviour and fitness of local ibex. Researchers placed trail cameras next to two natural springs, one of which can be accessed easily by tourists and is therefore much busier and the other is far more remote. In addition to the water pools at both sites, a camera trap was installed in front of a pistachio tree at the busy site, where ibex forage, and from where hiking trails begin. The restrictions imposed during COVID reduced the number of visitors at the busy site from an average of 315 to 104 visitors per day. In terms of the animals, during these restrictions the ibex arrived on average 80 minutes earlier to the busy site, whereas no significant difference in arrival time was noted at the remote site. At the pistachio tree, they concluded that ibex avoided the area when visitors were present. Finally, the ratio of females to kids during the summer of the pandemic doubled at the busy site, whereas no significant difference was observed at the remote site suggesting that while other factors could be at play, the presence of humans may affect kids' survival rate and overall reproductive success of the Nubian ibex, something our next species learnt the hard way. Over several centuries, the alpine ibex was driven to near extinction due to over-exploitation and poaching, resulting in just a single population numbering less than 100 individuals in the early 1800s. Thanks to significant conservation efforts, today the alpine ibex is one of only two wild goat species to be listed as least concern, having been reintroduced to much of its natural range, resulting in a healthy mature population of 53,000 individuals as of 2023. This population is split between eight countries across the European Alps, from France and Italy in the west, to Austria and Slovenia in the east, and has also been introduced to Argentina. When the Alpine ibex was on the verge of extinction, they existed only on the border of France and Italy, 
which was the site of a 10-year study on Alpine ibex social structure conducted in Italy's oldest national park, Gran Paradiso. Data was collected on a total of 111 male individuals in the spring and summer from 2008 to 2017. Individual attributes recorded included age, which was determined by counting the number of annual horn segments, and divided into four classes, young, sub-adults, fully grown adults, and old individuals over 11 years of age, and the season preceding death was also noted. Male association patterns were recorded along with male dominance, which was calculated using the ELO rating method, initially developed to rank chess players, and network analysis was also used to understand the social structure and relationships among male ibex. Researchers found that this population of alpine ibex was highly cohesive, stating that fission fusion dynamics led almost every male in the population to associate with each other male at least once. Fission refers to when a group splits into smaller groups, and fusion refers to when smaller groups merge into larger groups. Males were more likely to associate with those closest in age, and dominance interactions were more likely to occur between individuals the greater the difference in age, with the older individual being more likely to be dominant over the younger. They also found that the ibex's social networks are less connected in the summer compared to the spring, and that middle-aged ibex are the most socially connected. Aside from the alpine ibex, the only other wild goat to be listed as least concern is the Iberian ibex, with around 50,000 mature individuals dotted across Spain, and small regions of northern Portugal and southern France, where it has been reintroduced after two of the subspecies became extinct. This species exhibits variations in pelage, which can vary from a darker coat to a reddish brown. One study states that this difference in coat colour along with horn morphology is the basis for the subspecies, and the same study brings into question their categorization after analysing the genetic makeup of three Iberian ibex populations. The researchers state that genetic differentiation, the difference in genetics between populations, can occur in different ways and should be managed separately. Genetic drift refers to the passing on of genes by random chance, which can occur in various ways. One example could be a population of ibex where a sudden natural disaster randomly kills half of them. The genes passed down to the next generation aren't there because those ibex are better adapted, but simply because they happen to survive the event by chance. Importantly, events like these are referred to as genetic bottlenecks. The researchers state that if genetic drift is the cause of genetic differentiation, the flow of genes between populations should be re-established to increase genetic variation, decrease potential inbreeding, and thus increase the fitness of the populations. On the other hand, if adaptation is the cause of genetic differentiation, populations should be kept separate to prevent the introduction of maladapted genes. The results of the study found that although the three populations were genetically distinct, the population to the south in the Sierra Nevada was less genetically similar to the others in the north, despite being the same subspecies as one of them. Additionally, the two populations to the north showed evidence of genetic bottlenecks, whereas the Sierra Nevada population to the south did not. These findings raise interesting questions, both regarding the classification of Iberian ibex subspecies, and also how these populations should be managed to ensure the future of the species. All three wild goats discussed so far are fairly similar in appearance, which is not the case for the first of the species we'll explore in Central Asia. The Markor is arguably the most unique of all of the wild goat species, being the only one to exhibit spiralled horns, and a long beard and ventral mane which looks similar to that of the Barbary sheep or Audad. There are many media outlets that cite the Markor as the largest wild goat, although all of the sources that I found put it around the same weight as the Alpine Ibex. Regardless, its unique appearance makes the Markor unfortunately popular with hunters, and this species is the first of four that we'll explore with a status of near-threatened. 
Given this status, assessing suitable habitat for the markhor is of the utmost importance and was the focus of a study published in Sustainability in 2022. The study area was located between three districts in northern Pakistan, which is part of the spectacular Hindu Kush mountain range. In order to model habitat suitability, the researchers needed both observation and environmental data. To collect observation data, the researchers spent six weeks walking along transect lines, using binoculars and rangefinders to pinpoint the location of Markor, and the location of fecal samples was also recorded. For the environmental variables, in addition to temperature and precipitation, researchers also used the density of rivers, the density of roads, and the type of soil, amongst other variables. This map shows the results from their modeling, highlighting the most suitable habitat for Markor, which includes Pakistan's spectacular Chitral Gol National Park. And this table shows the variables they found to be the most important, with the type of land cover having the highest significant contribution, in addition to precipitation seasonality, minimum temperature of the coldest month, and the density of rivers also playing important roles showing the need for the expansion of protected areas, amongst other recommendations made by the researchers. The current population size listed by the IUCN numbers just under 6,000 mature individuals, spread across six countries in Central Asia, and we must travel across the Caspian Sea to view our next two species. The borderlands of Russia, Georgia and Azerbaijan play host to a spectacular mountain range known as the Greater Caucasus Mountains, which contains the highest mountain in Europe, Mount Elbrus, and the Caucasian Terz. Many sources define two species, the Eastern and Western Tur. However, some evidence also points to a third population known as the Mid-Caucasian Tur, which is handy to note for the study that we'll explore later on. The range of the Eastern Tur is the larger of the two, and in addition to covering Russia and Georgia, stretches into northern Azerbaijan. This species also has a significantly larger mature population of around 23,000, and is listed as near threatened. Like most wild goat species, with the exception of the Walia ibex, mating takes place in late fall or early winter, and after a gestation period of around five and a half months, Females give birth to between one to two kids in the spring. The male Caucasian turs have particularly thick horns, and several sources list the eastern species as the largest wild goat, with the largest males weighing over 300 pounds. On the other side of the Greater Caucasus, tragically, the western tur is the only species of wild goat to be classified as endangered, despite its population size being larger than that of the Walia ibex. The IUCN states that this is because of its small decreasing population size, which numbers between 3 to 4,000 mature individuals as of 2019, its small range at 3,300 square kilometers, the small number of locations where it is found at fewer than five, and the impact the species experiences from habitat loss and degradation. As with many rare species, the Caucasian turs are unfortunately targeted by poachers, but a fascinating study details how DNA analysis was used to prove that poaching occurred. In February 2020, a suspected poacher was found with two duffel bags containing the remains of what he said were domestic goats from his own flock. Samples were taken from the duffel bags and from the crime scene where more remains were found. DNA was extracted from the samples, and in addition to other techniques, short sequences of DNA known as microsatellites were used to create genetic profiles. The results of the study showed that the animal was male, and was most likely a mid-Caucasian tur, not a domestic goat. Although the study doesn't include the outcome of the legal proceedings, it does mention a case in Italy where a suspect was convicted of wild boar poaching based on microsatellite profiles. Of the nine species of wild goat, we unfortunately have only two left to explore, the first of which has several claims to fame. The Siberian ibex boasts the largest mature population size of between 102 and 150,000 individuals, 
A presence in the greatest number of countries at 10, with its large range stretching from Russia and Mongolia in the northeast to Afghanistan's highlands in the southwest, and the highest elevation of any wild goat species at up to 5,500 meters. Adding to the weight debacle, many sources list the Siberian ibex as weighing close to 300 pounds, throwing another contender for the heaviest wild goat species into the ring. The Siberian ibex is also subject to arguably the most exotic range of predators, many of which it shares with the markhor, including the snow leopard, the Eurasian lynx, the brown bear, packs of Asiatic wild dogs or doles, and even the golden eagle gets in on the action. The avoidance of such predators is one of the primary reasons why females prefer more rugged terrain than males, according to the results of a study published in 2021. Researchers used very similar techniques to the first habitat suitability study we explored to model the differences in suitable habitat for both male and female Siberian ibex. They found that overall, the ruggedness and elevation of the terrain were the most important factors affecting habitat selection in Siberian ibex. However, different sexes prioritize different habitat variables and for different reasons. Females prioritize rugged terrain more than any other variable to increase the security of their young and themselves, and distance to rivers was the second most important factor due to their higher water demands. By far the most important factor for males was elevation, which the researchers state was to avoid higher temperatures and the greater presence of biting insects found at the lower elevations. In addition to the wild species discussed so far, as of 2022 there are thought to be over 1 billion domesticated goats worldwide, split between well over 500 breeds. All domestic goats are thought to have descended from the wild goat, which is considered by many to be a separate species. Today, the wild goat is found in at least nine countries, from Turkey in the west, through the Caucasus region and into Iran, and stretches as far east as Pakistan, making its range comparable in size to that of the Siberian ibex. The wild goat has a healthy mature population of around 70,000 individuals, but surprisingly was the species most difficult to find photos for. Some of the closest relatives to the goats of the Capra genus include the Audad and the sheep of the Ovis genus, all of which you can learn about in this video, exploring all eight species of wild sheep. Thank you so much for watching.